Good morning. Well, it has recently become very chilly here in Northern Arizona because it's uh, mid-October and fall is coming in, but that is a great setting for my weekend adventure in Jerome. So I want to tell you, I had an opportunity to spend a weekend in a beautiful Victoria home with some friends of mine and made me do a little bit of research about the town and I thought I might want to share you the information I found uh, on the town and also give you some uh, beautiful footage of what I saw while I was there. There was great shopping, great restaurants, great place to stay and it was all around a very fun weekend. So before I show you uh, the Jerome video, I'd like to just say if you have any interest in finding out about real estate in northern arizona i do sell real estate up here and if you look below in the description you can find my contact information so if you have any kind of question about northern arizona or about real estate uh, be sure to look below and drop me a line you could text me you could call me you could email me and i will definitely get back to you <laughs> So last weekend, I stayed at a quaint little Victorian home called the Pink Lady. I would guess this house is about 100 years old, uh, and there are quite a few homes in this area that are about that age. First, I want to tell you a little bit about Jerome, though actually it started out as a mining town, and in about 1876 is where the first mining claim had been submitted. And in 1883, the United Verde Mining Company opened up and started the big mining of copper. Now, around this time and in the last century, Jerome was actually known as the wickedest town in the West. So once the mining operations were going full force, people moved to the town, you had miners, smelter workers, firefighters, gamblers, bootlangers, even saloon keepers, storekeepers, prostitutes. There's quite a bit of prostitution and Jerome in the day, um, preachers, and of course, wives and their children. And that all made Jerome what it was. Now, in the heights of the mining error, the mine brought out over a billion dollars worth of copper from its death. Jerome, the town of Jerome, was actually founded in 1876, and it was once the fourth largest city in the Arizona Territory. And considering Arizona wasn't founded until I think it was 1912, uh, so this is long before Arizona had actually become a state. Between the years of 1894 and 1899, there were actually four disastrous fires in Jerome that destroyed large sections of the town. But the town was always rebuilt, and as a result, um, it is still standing today. Underground mining was augmented by the Arizona's first open pit mine after that uncontrollable fire had erupted in the tunnels. Now, the fire burned for over 20 years until that big smelter shop that you see near Clarkdale, they moved the smeltering operations from Jerome to that big hideous smelter factory that you will be seeing when you are driving in Clarkdale. So now something else interesting happened in Jerome. In the late 1930s, there was an enormous charge of dynamite that had been set off. And apparently it was about 260,000 pounds of dynamite. And the tunnels under the town and somewhere as deep as 4,800 feet below the surface, they began to crack and shift. And the shifting combined with, you know, the town has a 30 degree incline on the mountainside. It pulled a lot of the businesses down the slope and entire sections of businesses um, collapsed in the downhill. Now, I'm going to show you a little bit later. There is a famous uh, sliding jail in uh, Jerome where the jail actually moved downhill 225 feet and sat in the middle of Holt Avenue until 
a bulldozer finally moved it to its final resting place, uh, place sorry, across the road from its original site. And I'm going to show you that, um, the jail site in a little bit. So in the 1920s, the population of Jerome was actually at 15,000. But within 10 years, uh, the depression set in and the population dropped to less than 5,000. Now, the depression of the 30s slowed mining operations. And in 1935, uh, the mining company was purchased by Phelps Dodge for about $20,800,000. But... One, listen, you hear bands playing in the streets, kind of fun to just walk around. So because it was dependent on the up and down of copper prices, labor unrest, depressions, wars, Jerome's mines actually closed down in 1953. And after that, after King Copper, they call it, left town, the population dove from its peak of $15,000 in the 1920s to about 50 people, 50 in the late 1950s and within five years of the mines closing jerome became what we call the largest ghost town in america so if you're a little bit older like me and you like to go to bed early and not be woken up by loud music you won't want to stay at this connor hotel because underneath is a spirit room and late late into the night there is loud music and rowdy party sounds and you won't be able to go to sleep. I'm going to show you a little clip coming up where my friend Jim is reenacting the time he was leaning against his pole while his wife was shopping and he heard in his left ear a woman's very sultry and sexy voice say, excuse me. So, Again, there are rumors that the town is extremely haunted. In fact, we went on a ghost tour during this trip. It was a lot of fun. Um, but that's just uh, some of the history of Jerome. So now back in the 1960s and the 1970s, Jerome experienced a bit of a, a revision where artists and um, shopkeepers came in and they started opening the town back up to tourism. And today... It's a thriving place for tourists, for ghost town tours, for ghost hunting and all that kind of stuff. Galleries, it's just a fun place to shop, a fun place to eat. Now take a look here and you'll see the final resting place of what we called Jerome's Sliding Jail. So this is where the jail actually ended up and uh, that's where it sits today. So once this thriving mining camp between the late 1880s and the early 1950s um, went and became a ghost town then back in the 60s and 70s and today Jerome is what they consider a bustling tourist magnet and an artistic community and today's population is about 481 and that population includes artists, craftsmen, musicians, uh, restaurant owners, writers, and people who would want to retire and come to this beautiful place uh, to call home. So let me run you through some of the important dates in Jerome's history. In 1882 is when the United Verde Copper Company formed, and that's where the mining hustle and bustle first began. But not until 1899 was Jerome incorporated, and immediately on incorporation, it became the first largest town in Arizona. In 1912 was when Arizona became the 48th state of the Union, and in 1922, Jerome built the Jerome high school and classes began there in 1923. In 1929, Jerome reached the peak of its population at 15,000, but by 1953, Phelps Dodge closed all of the mining operations and that's when the population of Jerome took a nosedive and by 1955, the total population of Jerome was less than 50 people. 
But by 1999, Jerome celebrated their 100 years of incorporation. And now, ironically, Jerome is the smallest incorporated town in Arizona, where it was the fourth largest incorporated town when it first incorporated back in 1899. So today, actually, as of the 2013 census, the population is 451, and it remains a wonderful tourist destination for shopping, um, ghost hunting, restaurants, and viewing art galleries. Okay, that's it. That's all I know about Jerome. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you do, please give me a thumbs up, uh, like, maybe come back, uh, subscribe. That would be wonderful. And again, my name is Dawn Dickinson. I live here in beautiful Sedona, Arizona. So if you have any interest in buying or selling real estate up here, uh, be sure to give me a call. My contact information is below in the description, and I hope you enjoy the video, and I hope to see you back here again next week.